This is Trend Following Radio, where great thinking comes alive. Nobel Prize winners, legendary traders, best-selling authors, and the pros that know what drive us irrational human beings. I am your host, Michael Covell. Not filtered, raw, honest. That's my passion. Some thought experiments today with a bent on statistical thinking, with applications to trading, with a focus on life. Let's assume three populations. There are three populations in this mythical world that I'm imagining. Population A, population B, population C. Population A and B are each 49% of the population. Population C is 2%. Since the dawn of time, a little hyperbole there, but since the dawn of time, that's been the distribution. 49, 49, 2. Maybe less than 2 a little, maybe more than 2 a little. But let's just assume 2. Now let's talk about those three groups, A, B, and C, over time and over generations. The traditionalists, born 1913 to 1945, and the baby boomers born 1946 to 1964, generally view population C between 2.5% and 1.5% over time, let's say over the last 10 years. Pretty consistent, not really moving, again, roughly 2%. Now my generation, Generation X, has generally held that population C was about 3%. Now that was in 2012. Now up to 2021, Gen X sees population C as 4.2%. So about a 1% jump in 10 years, or we should say, what, 30% or so? Now if we move forward in time, the millennials born 1980 to 1999 have viewed this population C as around 6%. So double Gen X, triple the baby boomers, three to four times that of the traditionalists. But here's where it gets interesting. In the last four or five years, the millennials, this 1980 to 1999 group, and this C population has gone from 6% to 7% to 8% to 9% to 10%, literally jumping a percent a year. So all other things being equal, the millennial distribution has gone from 49, 49, 2, to 45, 45, 10. That's kind of interesting compared to Gen X, the baby boomers, the traditionalists. Now let's take it to the current generation. 1997 to 2002, Generation Z. They saw in 2020, population C comprising 16% of the population. In 2021, they jumped up to seeing population C as 20% of the population. And my understanding is that this particular group has now taken it up to close to 30% of population C which means we've gone from our grandparents understanding this distribution as 49, 49, 2, to the millennials, the younger people in our society, to understanding the distribution very close to one-third, one-third, one-third. Now, these are quite dramatic shifts. What is so special about this population C? Why is this population C growing essentially over all of the younger generations and rapidly growing within a few years? That seems like a place for scientific inquiry. It seems like a place where you would want to investigate. How can our grandparents see population C as 1% or 2%? But then their great-grandkids are seeing population C as 30%.
How can that happen? And should you be skeptical? Well, damn sure you should be skeptical. Let's proffer some ideas of how this could happen. How a population that was so small could grow all of a sudden. Social media messaging, school messaging, K through 12, college, ESG scores, this environmental social governance, diversity messaging, and just flat out government messaging. There seems to be a real demand to push people into believing in C. And if you look at the trend line of those that are under 30, it sort of looks like C is going to be the largest population soon, dwarfing population A and B. So what do you do with this? I mean, everyone knows what I'm talking about. Everyone knows what this is. How do you fix it? Can you fix it? Should you fix it? Or should you just bet on it? This example presents some interesting conundrums if you're a thinking person. Now, if you are a thinking person and you do understand the scientific method, before you even get into the scientific method, you know something has already gone wrong with the youngest generations. Somehow or another, they have been shifted or changed. And look, propaganda is not a new thing. But this particular type of propaganda, to bring people along so fast, so radically, it almost takes your breath away. I mean, if you just sit back and you want to be an objective, let's say, business person, you would have to clap your hands and say, wow, what a strategy. What an execution. Talk about delivery. They have shifted the hearts and minds of millions, if not billions of people in a very short period of time on a very intense personal issue related to all of humanity. And again, it sure looks like if it keeps going the trend line it's going, population C will be the largest population in humanity. Unless there's a reversal. Can there be a reversal on an issue like this? I would assume so, because the trend line to go for population C happens so fast to begin with. But then again, people are stubborn. There's cognitive dissonance. People don't want to be wrong. People don't want to look like a fool. So maybe there will not be a reversion. Again, maybe population C is going to be where we go in terms of a species. And that has all kinds of potential effects for the future. But can you do anything? Can you do anything? If you want to change the narrative on your favorite company, you could be Kramer, and maybe you would get a lot of people to do something. But ultimately, a company's share price is going to go where it goes. And the crowd will push it along until the crowd doesn't push it along. Population C sure looks like it's going to push along until the crowd stops pushing along or keeps pushing along, which brings me back to my point that I made a moment ago, the idea of betting on it. You can surely see the parallels here to trend following. You might have all the information in the world about the cocoa market. You've studied everything there is to know about the cocoa market. You think you know every bit of every fundamental and you can project and you can predict, but it doesn't make a difference if the price is going up or down or sideways, meaning your fundamentals might not connect with the price. I could lay out all the fundamentals and I believe there are a lot of them as to why population C is not accurate, not true, and looks to be some moment of mass psychosis. But if everyone has mass psychosis and everyone's going in that trend line, do you stand in front of the train? Now that gets to be a little bit existential because what happens 
if it is a mass psychosis for population C and everyone refuses to stand up to it and population C gets more and more power and the train gets farther and farther down the tracks, it becomes harder and harder to stop. But then again, can you stop it? Can you really stop it? It sure looks like to me that people in population C deeply believe what they believe. They don't seem open to suggestion. They don't seem open to persuasion. They like what they think. Back to the existential. Do we bet on that trend line? Do we prepare for that trend line? Or do we stand in front of the trend line and attempt to alter it? This is how trend following works. And if you have listened to this podcast, you know where I stand on population A, B, and C. You know where I stand after listening to me today, where I stand. Mass psychosis, population C. But it's the parallel. It's the connection to trend following and the connection to fundamentals that is so fascinating. Again, you could be the cocoa master. You could be the soybean master, the crypto master. You could understand the S&P at five-minute bars master, or at least you think you could. The gold master, the palladium master, the silver master, the apple stock master. But markets don't move based on your understanding of them. Markets just move. Because when you have so many people participating in a game, betting, betting their beliefs, betting their money, markets are going to go where markets are going to go. So how stressed out are you going to get over population C and its current direction if you really can't control it, if you really can't stop it, if you really can't stop or control gold? whether it's going up or down, you can't do anything. You can't truly understand it. This is the beauty of trend following. We can spend our lives on a daily basis wrapping ourselves up in the notion that we can understand it all. Or, as Tom Basso might say, enjoy the ride. Or, as Alan Watts might say, go with the flow. Or as Larry Height might say, just follow the rule, have a stop loss, which means go with the trend. So when it comes to something like population C or any other market, so to speak, your personal morals, your ethics, your politics, your economics, yeah, I get it. I'm there with you on a certain level. I want to put my foot down too. But can you? Should you? Should you even attempt? If you're beating your head against the wall, you could also go down this path of playing with populations when you're looking at particular issues in America or even around the world when it comes to education, when it comes to crime. The moment that you start to think in terms of numbers, the moment you start to think in terms of statistics, you're on to something. You're into a world of logic. You're into an engineering mindset. I had somebody tell me the other day that former President Donald Trump was essentially the devil incarnate. Fair enough. I think at least half of America believes that. But I would point back to that half of America. Why? Why is he the devil incarnate? Why is Barack Obama the devil incarnate? Why is George Bush the devil incarnate? How does one come up with a particular position on anything? Whereas trend following says, I don't need to know all that. I don't need to be caught up in your emotions. I don't need to be caught up in your group think. I just want to look at the numbers. What are the numbers? And make rules to follow the numbers. Detach yourself. Don't allow yourself to get caught up in it all. There is a magic hand out there right now that's pulling the levers on all of these conversations. It's not happening organically, and it's not happening in a viral sort of way. 
somebody, someone, some group is attempting to get most people worked up, worked up into some type of emotional lather to where they can't think clearly, to where they can't look at the numbers. Now, here's a challenge for you. Whatever issue that you might want to debate, maybe you agree with me, maybe you disagree with me, but I can promise you this, somebody like me, I fight on the side of the numbers. So if we sit down at the table, don't give me your emotional histrionics. I don't give a shit. Just put the numbers on the table. Because if we are thinking people, if we are rational people, logical people, the numbers are going to tell us the story. We might not like the numbers. We might want to change the numbers. We might agree with the numbers. Doesn't matter. The numbers are the damn numbers. So if XYZ market goes from 5 to 10 over six months, then over the next six months, it goes from 10 to 30, you could have every argument with those numbers that you want to. Maybe if these numbers represent a company, the company is a piece of shit. Maybe it's got no balance sheet. But if the trend line is up, we could argue with those numbers all day long, but the numbers are the damn numbers. Now, that doesn't mean the numbers can't reverse and go the other direction. Of course they can. And in life, you need to have rules for that. Rules for when the numbers change. It's tough. It's interesting to be a trend-following trader. Because a lot of us have strong ethical views, strong moral views, strong economic views. We get how the game works. We understand politics. But all of that doesn't matter if the price is crashing or the price is zooming straight up. That's really tough for people to accept. And back to my controversial laying out the three populations, it's very difficult for me to accept. I know there is a magic hand pushing younger generations to believe that 30% plus of their generation is in population C. I know that at its root level, that's psychotic compared to the parents and the grandparents and the great-grandparents. It makes no sense. But you still have to deal with the numbers. You can't make the numbers go away unless you're going to have a fight, you're going to have a war, and those are options. Those are often options in society. We can definitely see over history how that's happened. My intention today, though, was just to put this thought experiment out to get you thinking in terms of numbers, to get you thinking in terms of counting. Because once you allow yourself to go this way, life's a lot easier. They don't have life extension yet. It's not worth dying over stress regarding an issue that you can't control. The best thing you can do on this planet is to do something big, to contribute, to give back. Make something happen. It's all you can do. Everything else is noise. Just count. If you keep counting, you're going to have a great life. I see a time when those awake will understand how to make money in up, down, and surprise markets. Whether new trader or experienced, college student or financial advisor, protecting against a crash or just trying to make a lot of money, Trend Following offers everyone an answer in uncertain times. To get started immediately, send me an email, michael at covell.com. I will send you the right trend following steps to take along with my free video. But if you want to buy and hold, trust the government and trust Wall Street. This is absolutely not for you.